All right, so the previous example illustrated some potential properties of, of integrals, um, of definite integrals, which we're going to see here in this theorem. Okay? Um, so again, remember that our definition of the integral is in terms of area, right? Total signed area under a curve. So we understand this first property as saying that, you know, um, if your area is, you know, if your region is one dimensional, right, if, if you're going, if you're beginning and ending at the same point, then all you have is a height, there's no width, right, and if there's no width, there's no area, okay, so this is simple enough, right, we, we saw it in the last example in terms of, in terms of triangles, that if there's no area, there's no width. Um, this second one we also saw illustrated in the previous example, and it's also a fairly intuitive result, right, it says that if you're going from A to B, okay, and you have some intermediate value, let's say C, okay, then the total area from A to B is the same thing as doing the area from A to C, and then adding the area from C to B, right? So this is just saying that if you, if you have some region and you divide it into two pieces, right, then the total area is just the sum of the resulting areas of the two pieces. Okay, simple enough. Um, the third one is a little bit mysterious, okay, if, if you flip the bounds of integration, you get a sign change. Um, this one's a little bit strange, uh, we'll, we'll make, be able to make a little bit more sense of this once we get to this Riemann sum definition for the definite integral, which is coming up soon. Um, but you can also make sense of this just in terms of, of trying to get things to, to fit together, right? Um, so one of the things you could do in this example here is you could maybe put c equal to a, right? Um, if you put c equal to a, uh, you would have the integral from a to a of fx dx plus the integral from a to b, right? Um, actually, that one is not going to quite work. How do we want to do this? We probably want to do, um, a to b, maybe c equals b, no, it doesn't quite work there. Uh, we'll sort this one out though, okay? Um, oh yeah, I know how we can do it. Um, if we move it to the other side, right, this would be the same thing as saying that the integral from a to b fx dx plus the integral from b to a of fx dx. Well, using, using rule number two, that works out to be the same as the integral from a to a of fx dx. And then using rule number one, we know that that's zero. So if we bring this one to the other side, we get that result. Um, now, you could reasonably object that, that somehow in our definition this doesn't even make sense. Um, we could also try to make sense of it in terms of something like displacement, right? Um, at a reversing time or something like that. Um, or, or, you know, you just think about, well, if you kind of go out and then you come back, right, you, you return to where you started, there's, there's some way to probably make sense of that. Um, to really understand this one, you have to wait until we have a more careful definition. Okay. The last two, um, the last two are, are, are pretty clear just based on properties of functions, right? Um, the way we define the sum or difference of two functions is we, we add or subtract the values, right? We do this pointwise definition, right? F plus G is defined as you take the value for F of X, you add it to the value for G of X, right? Um, so if you had the area under F and you had the area under G and you add the two functions together, right? You're, you're adding the heights well, you're keeping the, the widths the same, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to that's gonna add the two areas, right? You're kind of taking the area for one function and you're adding it on top of the area for the other. You can think of it like that if you want. Um, and, and this one we saw illustrated in the previous example. If you do a vertical stretch, right, you remember multiplying by a constant is just a stretch or a shrink. Um, unless that constant is negative, then you're reflecting across. That makes sense too, right? So if k is a positive constant, you're stretching or shrinking, 
right? And, and so that is going to affect sort of the, the vertical aspect in your area. And the area just gets multiplied by that stretch factor. If K is negative, you're reflecting across the x-axis. So if your graph was above before, now it's below. And of course, graph that lies below comes with a minus sign because we're doing this idea of signed area. And so again, it checks out. Okay? So these, uh, these properties frequently come in handy when we're solving problems. Um, and we'll, we'll put, them, put them to use uh, in an example in the next video.